Okay. Hey, I want to watch the, the news. Are you making are you making headway at least? This is the news. Smack em a gob, it's time for the only news that matters. And according to BBC News, plans to erect a statue of Motorhead's frontman Lemmy in the town where he was born has been approved. Lemmy was born Ian Kilmeister in Burslem, one of the towns that is part of the Stoke-on-Trent in Stamfordshire uh, before he and his family moved to Newcastle under Lyme. All right, as approved by Stoke-on-Trent Council, the statue, which is estimated to cost about $63,000, will be erect within Burslem's marketplace. The statue will be a sculpture in uh, Staffordshire clay by international renowned local sculptor Andy Edwards. It will be installed on a 10-foot plinth designed to resemble an overhanging stage and it will be made from sandstone and will include the motorhead logo as well as personal and career details about lemmy edwards agreed to increase the height of the plinth from 2.5 meters to 3 meters after concerns were expressed by police that the statue would attract good nature but potentially incident generating attention the proposed material to the plinth was also changed from polished black granite to sandstone to match the nearby Queen's Theatre and the former Town Hall. A mock-up submitted with the planning application for the proposed Lemmy statue, as it will look in Burslem's marketplace, can be seen here. This is a computer-generated. Uh, mock-up of what the statue would look like. Yeah, Lemmy died on December 28, 2015 at the age of 70, shortly after learning he had been diagnosed with cancer. Motorhead had canceled a number of shows in 2015 because of Lemmy's poor health. Although the band did manage to complete the European tour a couple of weeks before his death. In June 2020, it was announced that Lemmy will get a biopic treatment. Wow, I didn't know about this. The upcoming film, Lemmy, will be by, directed by Greg Oliver, uh, who previously helmed the 2010 documentary of the same name, Lemmy. A custom-made urn containing Lemmy's ashes is on permanent display at a Forest Lawn Cemetery in Hollywood, California. So there you go. Thinking of uh, making a statue for Lemmy. And I say, yeah, man, do it. Make a statue in every town for Lemmy, man. I miss Lemmy. And I miss the Ramones, man. I mean, to me, it's like, god damn, man. All the Ramones from the first couple albums are gone. And Lemmy's gone. It's like, man, after they left this world, really, really. Do you really think AI would be going on now if Lemmy and the Ramones were still roaming this planet? Hell no, man. I am. I really do think that if the Ramones, they wouldn't have died. You know, they would have reunited eventually. I know they did the farewell tour, but come on. What band has ever stuck around? I mean, and kept the farewell tour that had no but no of the members die, that they're all still around. What band is that? What band? I mean, every... Every band that did a farewell tour and never came back is because they died. You know? It's like, oh my God, all the Ramones are gone. I mean, you know, yeah, they could have reunited with Marky if they were still alive, you know? But, no, you know? And Rush, Rush is another one. Who knows? They might have toured again. We don't know. Yes, they said, but they didn't even say this is a farewell tour. They said, yeah, I think this is it, guys. They were kind of like, ah, we're, we don't want to. They're so classy. They don't want to say it's a farewell tour because what if it's not the farewell tour? But that's all these bands, like your, your Kiss, Judas Priest, Scorpions, and now Slayer. You know, all these bands, Motley Crue, announced farewell tours. 
only to come back. You know, they all come back unless they're dead. That's why I like bands like Lords of Call that say, we're on tour forever. They ain't going to play that farewell joke. Neither would Lemmy. Because come on. Everybody knew. We all knew. We are all big Lemmy fans. We all knew Lemmy's days were numbered. When he kept canceling shows with his help, he was extremely frail and skinny. It just looked like we were about to lose Lemmy, and we were right. And uh, just to give you my little history with me and Motorhead, period, was, and, you know, I'm going to brag about this, because I'm going to do now my impression of Eddie Trunk when he talks about people he knows and people that are on his cell phone and how he signed Ace Fairly to his first solo deal. All right, now it's my turn to brag, like Eddie Trunk. I saw the very first Motorhead show in America, and I saw the very last Motorhead show in America. They did do Europeans, uh, European dates after, but the last show they played in America was in Pompano Beach, and I was there. Lemmy was frail, and this was around the time where he was canceling a lot of shows or stopping in the middle of shows. He did this full show, and honestly, I don't think he was bad. Yes. I could tell a little frailment to, you know, the Lemmy I'm accustomed to, but it wasn't as bad as how it looked like on a lot of shows I've seen on video, where he's singing poorly and, you know, he's just doesn't have the energy. He, he had energy that night, which was weird. And that was the last show of uh, Motorhead in America. The first show of Motorhead in America was at the Miami Baseball Stadium with Hart, Blue Oyster Cult, I believe it was Firefall, an air band, yes, believe it or not, an air band that won a contest at a bar. You know, the, the radio station had a contest. You go up on stage and, and, and pretend you're a band and sing to a song like karaoke and see if it went. So, yeah, the air band, who I remember vividly, they played Paradise by the Dashboard Lights from uh, Meatloaf and, and open it for that was Motorhead. Motorhead was the first band. It was Motorhead Air Band. I could be wrong about Firefall. I know there was another band there, then Blue Is the Cult, then Heart. But the week of that show, on the radio, I was going to the show anyway because I love Heart and Blue Is the Cult. So I was, had my tickets to the show anyway. But the week before the show, on the radio, they had a commercial for Motorhead's brand new album, Mace of Spades. And that, how they're opening the show at the Miami Baseball Stadium. And in that commercial, they played, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds of the song Ace of Spades. And I heard that, and it blew my mind. And I told all my friends, we got to get there early. This band Motorhead is heavy, man. And at the time, they were the heaviest, I thought, you know. And, uh, yeah, uh, one vivid thing I remember is that, yeah, everybody was sitting down on the field during Motorhead set. Except for these two dudes, I'll never forget, without shirts on, you know, waving their shirts around, going crazy to every song. And it turned out those two dudes were from England. And Motorhead was huge in England at the time. They were playing the Hammersmith Odeon and shit. So they come here as unknowns. And there was a couple Brits there going nuts for me. And I did too. I just sat there in awe, going, my God, I didn't know any of those songs. So I'm sure they probably played overkill and I'm like oh my god you know it must have blown my mind to see you know stay clean ace of spades you know I'm sure they I wonder if they played we are the road crew I mean god overkill I I love 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 motorhead and I became an instant fan at that show I couldn't find ace of spades forever till I finally found at a record store that usually didn't serve a lot of metal they had no sleep till Hammersmith. I found that like, I don't know, 10 months later. And I was like, oh shit, Motorhead, finally a Motorhead album, you know? So I bought No Sleep Till Hammersmith, and to this day, that is the greatest Motorhead album in my possession and in my opinion. And uh, yeah, I got to meet Lemmy twice. Well, really three times, but the third time, I'll explain that later, but the first time, uh, was they played down here at a bar called a club called Button South opening bands was uh, Metal Church and Dangerous Toys now that was the tour which it was Air, uh, Alice Cooper Judas Priest Motorhead 
uh, Metal Church and Dangerous Toys. But when they played Florida, they broke it in half for Priest and and, Ju- and Alice Cooper were playing up north while they came down here and played that. And it was such a loud show. And I remember, this was a 1916 tour. And man, I remember Wurzel hurt my hand when he shook it. He, man, he shook my hand so hard. I was like, holy shit, man. He doesn't know his own strength. And, you know, Phil was cool. Phil wouldn't dr- sign the drumstick I caught for him. But it's cool because it's filthy animal. He's a god. It's all right. He signed my rock and roll album, so I'm cool with that. And, uh, you know, we met Phil. And then Lemmy comes out. And this, this was so epic. Lemmy comes out and he's got two really attractive girls with him. And they're both going with him to the tour bus. And here I am with my two buddies. And we're like, hey, Aunt Lemmy. And Lemmy was cool. He stopped, he signed our stuff, he talked to us for a little while. Well, I'm like, look how cool Lemmy is, man. Taking his time out for his fans, where he's just about to go nail these two girls, but still, he cared enough of his fans. And we sat there, talked to him, and I even said, Lemmy, I saw your very first show in America at Miami Baseball Stand, and he said, I remember that show, but that was not my first time in America. I've been here before with Hawkwind. I said, oh yeah, that's right, I mean, the first photo that show. He goes, yep, I remember that show, yeah, in Miami. It was a cool show. I remember it, I remember it vividly. And I was like, yeah. And then uh, my friend said to him after that, Lemmy, I love Zam Copal, Seasons of the Witch. Now, Zam Copal was a band he was in, I guess, in the 60s, that I guess he's not very proud of because once he said that to Lemmy, Lemmy just looked at him, shook his hand, all right, guys, I got to go. So, <laughs> we, we, uh, my friend brought up Zan Copal, and he's like, I'm out of here. And he went with his groupies in there. Then I met him again on Miami Beach, and that was very brief. I didn't want to bother him much. Had him sign a few things. And then the last time I met him was I went on the Motorhead cruise. And, uh, but that was not really meeting him. You know, we were all in line, and I was with a, a group of my friends, and we all took pictures together with Motorhead. You know, so I didn't really get to talk to him that day. But yeah, I love Lemmy. I love Motorhead. I've been a big fan. I own every single release they've done. I'm not including the countless live albums that that, uh, record companies put out, ripping them off and greatest hits and stuff like that. No, I don't own none of that. I own some, like uh, some beasts, like from the vaults and stuff like that. Because I'm just a huge huge Motorhead fan, and uh, yeah, it's sad, man. I did get to see Motorhead a handful of times, and man, one of the best times I ever saw Motorhead was when they headlined the second stage at OzFest, and I thought they destroyed every band, even the bands that were on the main stage. Megadeth was on the main stage, Ozzy, but Motorhead, to me, stole the show the whole day. They were so freaking amazing that night. And I saw him open for Slayer. It was Slayer, Motorhead, and Overkill. I saw that show. I've seen several of them. Oh, them opening for Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath, Motorhead, and, uh, and Morbid Angel. That was a killer show. Yeah, I've seen Motorhead a bunch of times. But, you know, same with the Ramones. I've seen the Ramones a bunch of times. And they're all gone. We cannot get no more Lemmy. Or the Ramones, or Van Halen, man, damn. Our time is coming past, but you know what? I'm just so glad that uh, they're building a statue, another statue, because he has one at the Rainbow Bar and Grill, and they made a, made, made a huge statue at you know, some metal festival. But yeah, man, long live Lemmy Kilmeister. Motorhead rules. Thank you all for watching. What do you think of Motorhead? What do you think of this statue? Isn't this cool? And uh, just tell me what you think. I would love that. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. And hey, thanks for watching. The only news that matters. Click that little notification bell. I would appreciate that. And hey, like the video. It's good for the YouTube algorithms. So stay frosty. Listen to Black Sabbath. And smack him a gun. Farewell and adieu to you fair Spanish ladies. Farewell and adieu to you ladies of Spain.
for we've received orders for to sail back to Boston. And so never more shall we see you again. <laughs>